emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. Hello, gang. Colin here. Festa 67's workshop, and welcome to part seven of the ball tank build. As you can see, we've got our little ball tank. <laughs> so now, I think we might need to start ourselves a bit of a diorama for it to sit on. So I'll just grab some bits. We got me obligatory bit of cardboard to start with, and I'll shove the tank in the corner. And this is just to give me a rough idea of, of what I'm looking at. So I'm going to have it at a slight angle. And then I'll scoot a couple of uh, temporary lines across the bit of cardboard just to give me an idea of sort of an idea of what I'm looking for. So I'll just sketch out a rough size of the dio along them lines. Get the scissors out and if I cut that to shape, it will then give me a rough dimension. I don't want to go too mad with a dio. Oh, just break me pencil there. Good start. So, having just sharpened said pencil, yeah, we'll give that a scoop. Square it all off. And then we'll get the scissors out and we'll give that a bit of a trim. Alright, so I'll whiz through this and cut that to size. And that will give us just under probably about A4 size there or thereabouts or so it'll do for what I intend to do which is just a little corner corner scene with the tank on a bit of uh, a bit of a hill and uh, at the bottom of the hill some water or something so that's what's going on in my mind so we'll have a look and see if we can try to create something in three dimension for this all to, to sit on just gives it a little bit of interest um, yeah you know I, I could just do the tank as is and, and quite happily but I like it to tell a little story and it is for the guys at eModels and they're ever so generous to let me do this so the least I can do is, is do a nice little bit of a dio for them and uh, yeah because this is going on display up in their shop and uh, let you guys then when you visit uh, the fellas you can have a look in the display cabinets and you can see some of the builds we've done so everyone will be happy so i'll kind of probably do this diorama about the height of the top of the ball tank so it will sort of be that tall and then it'll just come down probably to about 20 centimeters tall so we got some packing foam left over from when me 3D printer turned up me resin one and uh, it's perfect for this so I'm just going to hot glue it to the cardboard and build up a rough dimension and then we can get some hot wires out and knives and, and trim this down to fit what I want so I've got a couple of off cuts a couple of dabs of hot glue where I want it and we'll slap that together just like so a little bit around there and then we just quickly press it into place let it do its thing try not to burn your thumbs whilst you do it faster because you know hot glue is hot the glue is in the name there you go so we'll just give it a bit of a damage just to let it start taking fill in any un untoward gaps and I'm going to make a tiny little balsa wood frame that goes around this anyways so it'll have a plinth that it's sitting on and then just fill in any imperfections as I go and we're going to be um, coating this in a couple of layers of PVA glue and then we'll probably do a bit of the old paper mache over the top just to seal everything in and give me a base then to start putting me scenery um, paints and that on so we'll get on and make a couple of uh, bungs to fill uh, the voids in the middle of the die over there so we'll chop that Bung that piece in like so. 
a bit of hot glue and have you a bit of that. I don't normally work this fast folks but uh, yeah sped it up a little bit for you just to get through it so we'll have a bit of that start letting that set and then we've got a big old hole in the middle there to fill so we'll trim that down just a fraction more there with the old knife trying not to do a captain stab at here of course we'll leave that to fox and then what that in place with a bit of hot glue just like so and already I can see in my mind's eye where I'm where I'm going with this. Now you might you might not be able to see this yourselves indoors, bless you. But uh, I kind of have in me in me mind an image of what I think it would look like. And again, you can just add little bits of foam to to get little raised shapes you want. But I'm going to go around and trim this and, and shape it and, and, and take bits of foam away and until I get a rough proximity of what I'm after. So I'll just use my hot blade to quickly scoot some of this foam off and the big chunks will come out with a hot, hot cutter and then the rest of it will uh, come out with um, the knife. So... The little hot cutter is a little battery uh, hot cutter that I got, but I've wired it up to the mains so that I can just power it off of a, an old mobile phone charger. So that's what I use for the for the delicate bits, but for the big bulky stuff like this, I just quickly run down it with a blade, get the bulk off, and then if anything needs doing with a hot cutter, I can go back and finesse it. So. We're getting to the sort of rough dimensions, what I'm after, and then it'll be uh, shaping then the rock faces and the hillside and, and bits and bobs like that. That's what the plan is for that stage. So we can just have a quick look now. I'll drop the tank on in a minute just to see roughly whether I'm happy with it. Let's grab a Sharpie and uh, sketch out roughly the undulation I'm looking at from the side and as you can see straight away you know there's a, a fair bit of foam that I want to chop away on that corner and I'll come round the way a little bit of an overhang on that side because that's the side the tank's going to be sitting and then bring it down towards the bottom so as you can see there's some fair old bits to come out so I'll have a go with a hot cutter but if it's not man enough for some bits then obviously I'll do it with the knife but we'll have a, a start and see how we get on so I'll just nip some bits and bobs and then try and just start wiggling it along these edges like that and I want a little almost like a bowl effect down on this bottom corner because that's where the deeper water is going to be so Got a bit of a riverbed going on situation under there, so I'll probably get the knife going and get some of this real deep corner going with that. But let's just have a a quick try in this corner just to see. But I've got a feeling I might need something a bit stronger. They're all right, these little cutters, but they uh, yeah they're for edges really. So let's have a bit of a rethink and probably get the knife on it he says determined to have one more go yeah let's just have a quick looky loop and see whether or not we can get any more oomph out of it if not we'll uh, bring out the heavy furniture it's getting there bit by bit it's a bit like peeling a potato best way I can describe it it's just little thin slivers work your way along like that but I know I've got a lot to remove from this and this might take a while with the little uh, wire cutter so I'll persevere for a little bit longer but grab you some of that and that's the tank in the corner so he's going to live up there 
I'll probably just take off a bit more of these edges and there uh, get the old knife out because that whole big lump there is coming out so we get that big old chunk out of the way I reckon like that yeah there you go didn't want that bit and then just start really doing some deep cuts along there and it's funny I've just spied <laughs> I've just spied out of the corner of my eye there me uh, creme brulee torch so I might actually be able to warm up uh, some of this foam just to get some interesting heat contours almost made in the front of it I'll try and do it so that I don't actually catch it alight but it might help because as we know you know a bit of heat like that with uh, polished irene foam it does make it shrink back on itself a little bit so we've got shapes that we're we're happy with and a bit of a cliff overhang there going on so I can move all of this rubbish to one side I have a quick little shifty just to see whether there's any little undulations I can get with this hot air gun but this actually feels a bit cold and I don't think it's uh, powering quite right today so I might give up on that we'll see and do the rest of the shaping with the old uh, brulee torch and the, the knife because I want to get rid of that chunk there where my fingers resting on see so it's but then I could have that as a little rocky outcrop we'll see we'll see what happens with the torch I think so let's grab that yeah that's my little uh, brulee torch so I'll just fire that up now be careful if you're doing this folks and if if it's kids doing it get an adult to do this bit for you because you're using heat on a bit of foam and all I'm doing is I'm warming up the areas and then pulling the torch out of the way and it, it, as you can see it's melting back the uh, polystyrene and I'm voice over in this because when I was doing this I had my respirator on as well just in case any noxious fumes were given off so bear that in mind folks but with these little brulee torches you can adjust the flame on them right the way back and you can just use them for this sort of uh, shaping should we say so we just take a big old nodge off the front of that and that gives me a nice then rocky undulations going on and then I can go up underneath and perhaps get some uh, cliff sides going on and makes it easier as well when I PVA over it so just do a little bit more along the bottom edge there just to shrink that back because there's some quite interesting shapes forming now and old Fester's beginning to see what he likes coming out of this block of polystyrene now so do a little bit of a shape round there because I've got some fellas going on this as well so I want them to have interesting areas to stand on and I've got a bowl next to me with PVA and water in it and I'm soaking paper in there just to go over the polystyrene now just to start having a surface that I'll be able to prime and and get some interest going and this is very little PVA in this at the moment but you can then get your old squeezy tubes out and give it some neat PVA and I'll pour some of that in a jar in a bit and when I do the latter stages I shall be going over this layer with, with more but for the initial covering uh, this is perfect stuff and it's just ordinary hand towel off of a roll that I'm uh, paper mache in in there getting using the brush to get in all the crooks and nannies so to speak and uh, we'll try and start getting some of this to it here probably could have done with going over the whole polystyrene and doing almost like a PVA size but yeah I wanted to get on so the first bit in there let that start drying and then I can uh, warm it up with a hairdryer let it go to shape and then see what I end up with when it's dried and then it'll make it interesting with a bit of bit of starship filth and things like that and some oils just to start bringing out textures uh, 
for the moment we'll just put the paper mache on get that piece roughly where I want it and just start brushing in to get all of the uh, underlying shapes be easier to see once I've primed it actually it's a little bit whited out at the moment so apologies for that but you get the gist of what I'm up to and if you haven't done diodes there's more than one way to do them but but this way does work for me and there's there are videos out there that are very detailed um, I've got some of the scenery stuff that I shall be doing in the, uh, the next episode of this which will give you an idea on doing grass and rocks and, and things like that so they, that side of it's all to come yet but for the moment we're just going to be putting on a bit of PVA and brushing it over just to get this to start having a layer of glue on it that will dry it in and it will make it conform to the shape and uh, stay in place because it's uh, absorbent paper the PVA will soak through and uh, stick to the stuff that's underneath so have a bit of a dab over there come around that corner give that a bit of a twisty kins like so and let's try and get some of these edges to start just stick into the polystyrene there yeah it's a, a, a persuasion fit but it's getting there yeah maybe and just start making some shapes for the top put some of the uh, super tacky down just to give that something to bond to Just getting it roughly in shape, flick it over the edges and then just brush the PVA in and it will soak through this quite nicely. At this stage the paper does tend to lift up and down a lot but don't worry folks, it, it, once it's dry it will conform to all of these contours and it will stay in place. It just takes a little time to get it to go where you want it to but once it does it will stay there. Tell we watched Blue Peter when he was a child, can't you? Yeah. But it's getting there. I'm happy. In the world of Festa, this is going well. And it's actually quite therapeutic as well, sitting there doing this. Because it's something different, isn't it? It's like, yeah. And again, you know, you, you can you can almost envisage your model when it's on it in place, and it just gives you that little bit of inspiration to keep to keep at it. It's always a stage when I'm doing a dio like this. This stage here is always that you've got to do it, but you can't quite see what how it's going to turn out and you've got to then sort of convince yourself just keep pushing just keep pushing it'll it will then pop at you <coughs> excuse me do that little bit underneath the rock there a little bit of damage underneath <coughs> Excuse me. Just come down there. Try and get that bit to stick to that piece. Yeah. And then wet another piece there. And it's just layers upon layers upon layers. Just to give it a little bit of structure, a little bit of strength. All the way around the front there. Yeah. Put a bit around the edge. And then uh, come around that corner there onto the side. And I think we'll be able to start uh, putting some sides on in a minute as well. Just dress the sides up a little bit. 
Okay, you will fit. Go on. Round you go. That's better. See? Resistance is futile. There you go. Yeah. Let's put another layer on there. Let that absorb. See, the beauty of this is I can let this dry overnight. I'll probably let it dry for a couple of days, actually. And then you can come back at it then, and then any uh, imperfections or areas that you just need to quickly go back over, I'll go over with neat PVA just to give it a real sort of almost like a gel like covering. And it will help them when I then start painting some of the scenery on because I shall prime first and then uh, I'll give that a, a bit of scenery on there. So I'll brush the primer on. So I can get in all your nooks and crannies and everything. But we can put some side on there. And the sides, I tend to put neat PVA on the sides there and then just brush it on. Just to give it a bit more oomph, like so. Give that a press in place. And then just go over it so that it starts absorbing. And then I can fold it underneath onto the base. And we are getting getting close close to that point where the sides are gonna be on. So yeah, quite happy with this. There you go. Another layer on there. Get you some of that. Yeah, that's it. Tuck them bits underneath out of the way. Let me just quickly tear some of that off. Start getting that to then conform to some of the rock shapes. Just like we did earlier. There you go. And it's layer after layer. I'll probably put two or three layers on. That should be enough then uh, to bond it all together. There you go. Fold that under there. As you can see, it's just a slight bit of slope, a few rocky outcrops. Yeah, going down into a bit of water. Let's clean my mat off there. Got more, more PVA on the mat there. Yeah, need to clean my mat as well. All right, let's have a little swig of tea. And then we can come back at it and start doing the next little bits and bobs with it. So, that's had time to dry. So I think we're ready to start doing a bit of primer in. Uh, yeah, as you can see. Give that plenty around the edges there of the rocks. And this is just a little to me a pot of UMP primer I'm using. And I've decanted it in there and I just brush paint this on because I find with me brush I can get in all the little nooks and crannies at this stage with it and then I bring the airbrush out when I'm doing the detail stuff all the different colours of the rock and things like that but initially it'll be a coat of primer and then I'll go over that uh, on the rock faces with a bit of the old starship filth just to put any dark lines in any of the recesses and then I'll get the airbrush out and I'll start having a bit of a dabble with different shades and different bits and pieces for the rock so we'll see how it goes anyway I might be able to do it with just oils I won't know until I've uh, put some on and let it have a dry so initially I'm just painting all the surfaces with quite a thinned down uh, mix but uh, yeah, it's just had a little bit of um, distilled water added just to fill it down a tad to make this stage. It just soaks the primer in quite nicely for me and lets it paint rather rapidly with a brush. So that's why I keep it separate from my normal regular primer because it's only used for this stage of diodes when I do this. So I'll just give this an even first coat and then it'll have probably two or three different coats applied to it with a brush. 
and then it just starts letting you see some of the the shapes start forming of different little bits that I'm trying to achieve and again I've got soil grass grass tufts gravel rocks bits and bobs to go on this yet folks so this is quite early stage of it so bear with me just come down towards the rocky outcrops get the primer in all the nooks and crannies and then we can start seeing what's gonna become or start becoming to take shape just got a water pour to do yet as well so we'll just quickly coat around this edge here try and get that covered and then work my way around onto the side and the top and we are getting close to that sort of having its first coat of primer stage come down the sides there all the way along the bottom there yeah fill in that little bit and I think that should only leave the back to do then by powers of deduction so we'll spin that around in a sec and have a look just quickly touch up a few of these little spots and then I can let this absorb then and see how many more coats I'll need on it so all the way across there and slaver it across the front like that and uh, yeah the little world of the ball tank is beginning to take shape yeah. just quickly spin that round Cut the bits in there. Some shadow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm beginning to see it now. Da, 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 da. Start doing hummy noises now. Just put a bit more primer in there. Like so. And carry on paint around the front edge there and then we'll put some black on in a minute I reckon so let's have a, a start along the edge there I was going to put some black paint along the edges just to distinguish between them and the actual diorama so I should just whop a coat on there just to give this a coat and I know it's a bit shiny but bear with me, it'll get matted down at some point. But this is just for me, by eye, to have a quick shift at uh, what the diorama's actual footprint is going to be. So with the framework around it, which will be black, the front side and back edges being black, it will just let me see what the uh, lands, pardon me, the landscape looks like. So I'll just quickly black this off work my way around it try and keep as much of the contour of the diorama traveling through it as i can just to give it a bit of interest like so and speed my way around this just gets this all painted and looking uh, reasonably good quickly nip along the edge there and then down the hill towards the border. like that a little bit of deft brushing have you a bit of that come along the bottom there always through that uh, just lets me already at this stage begin to just see what what I was thinking come alive and yeah it's simple uh, you know it's a simple balsa wood frame as you can see i'm going to make and i'm using a bit of the old mitre bond on there just to glue this together 
So I'll just put the glue one side and then I do the pen the other, which is an activator. I'll just quickly deftly rub that along the leading edge there. And then when I lean the two together, thunk, we get stickage just like that. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty potent stuff, this, but uh, yeah. Because I've got a bit of a reputation with super glue folks, and I do tend to glue myself to things, and I thought I'd give this stuff a try to see whether I can defester the process. So hopefully I don't stick myself to anything. That's the theory. Have you a bosh of that? Look at that. Straight in. Ah! Yeah, see? I defy anyone now to blame Fester and his super glue shenanigans. Let's just quickly pop that piece back up. Have you a bit of that in there for the mitre, and then I can join that little edge up. Because I've got loads of little offcuts of this bolsa, and uh, yeah, we can knock a, a quick internal frame up ready for when I do my. Uh, wood strip base that this all sits on so I've got that to make right at the very end but for the moment this just gives me a quick quick little bit of framework to build on and then I can uh, start letting it take shape so I'll glue this to the bottom in a minute and then I'll be trimming the sides right the way back because all I want this to be is almost like a slight bead before I put the bottom edges on. So this bit of balsa won't stay this width. It will get trimmed with a knife. So it'll end up probably about less than half the thickness it is at the moment. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. So we'll pop a bit of pennage on and just drop that in place roughly where I want it. And it does bond really rapidly, this stuff. So try and remember when you put it in place to get it as near as damn it where you want it because you won't get it back off again. Okay, so we'll do me vertical bits. Scribe them with the old carpenter's pencil. Get the saw out. Have you some of that. Get it all joined and then I'll go around with the, the sandpaper and everything and neaten it all up right at the end. But for speed of build, I want to kind of try and get the side pieces on and, and any of the um, filler putties in and that, just so that I can finish this episode with a, a painted base and maybe even a few of the fillers on it as well. So that's what I'm aiming for, because I want to try and weather everything all as one unit. That's the theory anyway. So we'll just work our edges along. And I'll do everything by eye. Yeah. A bit of a saw along there. Oh. You don't see my ears, do you? Yeah, there you go. Da 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 Activator on and bosh straight in. And then a bit along there, clean that edge off. Get the saw out, trim that in place, quick dry fit. Yeah, might work better up that way actually. Yeah, get a bit of the old mic bond. Have you a bit of that? Do that on there. Scoot a little bit along there. Yeah. And get the activator pen on the wood this time. That way you don't get black paint all over the nib coal, do you? Yeah. And then just quickly press that in. Like so. Count the tent. And it's stuck. Which then leaves that side. See? I've got a little tiny piece just to add on the edge there. So it might yeah, use a fresh bit of coal. Da -da 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 -da. Dry fit. And then the same process again. Down the edges. Little squirty pops along the side. 
and along the bottom leading edge. And get the activator all the way along there. And that should then be the wood side of it all done and dusted. Get that on there, like that. Have a quick shifty. And then we can get ready then to run the blade all around the edge of that just to create a little almost like a five mil wide bead. It's all I want along it. Because I've got my pine my pine frame to go underneath it, see, so. So we can trim that right back, give it a haircut. That's all we want. Makes sounds seem a bizarre way of doing it, but the idea was to give the vertical sides something to stick on wood wise as well as with the dia and then this all then sits on the actual frame I'm gonna make at the very end. So we can get the sandpaper of goodness out. I'll probably uh, go around that with a bit of my old Vallejo putty. So I'll just reach and grab that. I've got a tube of it somewhere. Where is it gone? Yeah. Yeah, put, 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 put a Vallejo putty in there, I reckon. Uh, it's just there. Yeah, there it is. Have you a bit of that? Screw that along the side and use me pinky just to work that in any other little crooks and nannies just like that just to give that a nice little finish the edge and then it's just a matter then of working my way around all the corners all the different shapes just to start that looking a bit better and then uh, we can dress it up once it's all been uh, painted up and done so I can go around any leading edges just sand them back and then give them another coat of paint if I need to at the very end but for this moment in time it just gets everything together I'll probably end up redoing the black a couple of times because obviously I've got um, gravel and things like that getting uh, put on the dio static grass so there's going to be stuff that gets on the side so i'm going to end up going back over it with a probably another coat of paint but we'll have a look let me way around this corner i'm just squeezing enough in just so that when i run my finger it bridges the gap between the diorama and the wood frame i don't really need to go too mad Squish a little bit around the corner there and then come back, fill the void in, just like that. Drop your pinky in, there you go, and then come along that edge there. So, now a quick little looky look, clean that off of my finger, and then we can come along and do this piece, just like that, all the way along. To that corner, and let's quickly scoop all the way into there, and then come back and pick up any voids that are left. And it's gradually gone round that frame, and it's it's neatened it up a little bit, and just yeah, gives it a finished look, just like that. And it's it's nice and thin this stuff, and you can yeah almost draw with it it's a strange strange putty really it's yeah once you've got an edge for it to stick to itself you can then just use it to fill in any little voids and then just scoot along with your finger and bob your own hey good old fella i like that putty you probably noticed And all of this, don't forget, folks, can be bought from our guys at eModels. So pop along and pay them a visit. And don't forget, you know, uh, drop a line. I'll see how they're doing. Uh, bear in mind, obviously, we still got a bit of the world on fire situation going on. So they'll notify you when you're 
your orders have been sent out folks so just be a little patient because it's unique times we're all in but uh yeah they're ever so good i mean i put in an order for all me putty and stuff like that and it got to me within a week so i'm more than happy with that and they keep you notified throughout so we'll just scoot that bit of black paint on there on the front and work our way along there um, quite brutal with the paint at this moment I only want coverage I'm not looking for finished texture at this moment it's just to get the balsa covered so that we can start looking at the dio itself it takes your eye off of it otherwise if you've got all of this activity going on around it I just all I want to see is the grey area of the dio on my bench so to speak so that I can then start detailing it as I want so for the moment this will have a, a bare coat of black primer on it and uh, yeah the finished coat will go on and uh, probably mat it down in between just to give it a bit of um, protection but yeah let's quickly wadge along the front there like so and you just blend in then the frame into the actual black side of the dio so yeah the party should go off pretty quickly anyway so slather a bit of paint in there like that and that is coming along quite nicely actually really really quite pleasantly pleased how far we got on this episode so just scoot along that side there just to close in the uh, color of the bolts up black that out uh, quick flick over the uh, edges there and i reckon I've got what four dudes to go on there so they're little fellas that are 3d printed little soldiers and they've had a quick quick coat of white paint and a, a little bit of camo done and then the rest of it will be done on the dio so you've got the water going on on the front edges where the two big recesses are so they're going to go on uh, this had a coat of the old Abtai Lung Starship filth uh, at Thailand 502 just because I wanted to get right into the recesses of the rock so it's not gonna stay that color it's only a background almost like a an oil wash but a bit more coverage and then I can go around and dry brush edges and, and things like that but we've got the, the dudes to go on so I'm going to want them on at this stage purely and simply because I need to build up dirt and detritus around the bases some of them are getting put on with just the foot area being fixed and others are going to have a bit more of a base left I'm going to trim them back and just give them a bit more strength when they uh, are fixed to the dio and then I can build up around them with bits of gravel grass tufts and things of that nature but tank is roughly going to sit there at a slightly jaunty angle with this fella behind them with the big old uh, gatling gun and almost he's peering out from beside the door he's walked along he's, he's just having a check in the tank to make sure wh whether or not anyone's going to shoot him i was thinking of bringing him out there but i thought it wouldn't it would be too prominent so i just thought i would do him almost shielding himself slightly for a bit of protection and peering out behind the door there so if he's needed he can do a, a bit of a, a shoot and uh, this fella down here is inspecting something that will appear in the water once the uh, resin pours done so he's having a looky loo down there and then he'll have a couple of fellas that are almost giving him a bit of uh, protection cover firing cover just in case anyone else is about or a sniper's about or whatever so 
I'll just put a couple of drops of Mitre Bond on there and then I'll go on the base of the resin figure with the activator and that should then bond in very strongly to the dio. that's the plan so we'll do a bit of that and get these these four fellas in place I'm not going to fix the tank in place yet folks so the tank will come off the dio whilst I do all the static grass but the actual fellas I need in place because obviously as you can see with the base there he looks like he stood looks like he stood on a snowboard and we don't want that this fella his plates are getting glued straight to the rock because it's just rock whereas the other fella he's going to have a little bit of grass gravel to try at us around him where stuff is still growing on some of the uh, rock surfaces so that's the theory so I'll put a bit of that on the actual base there because I need to put the dabber glue on his feet it's the opposite way round so I'll put that in there and just give him a press quick count of 10 bonk he's on there look at that see it is that quick folks so I think he can go there as a bit of shielding cover for the fella out on the rock so we'll whop him in place and then we can put a bit of glue there by the uh, leg of the tank and then activate on the bottom of the resin and we'll bung him in place and uh, that then leaves our, our chap with the big old gatling gun and that's a that's a beast of a weapon he's got there, I must admit. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to come across him, I must admit. So we'll have him there. So he's come round from the side of the tank. He's had a little looky loo in there and thought, well, I'm happy with that. So he's now gone out just to give his mate a bit of protection. And the guy with the Gatling guns there just keeping an eye on things and it's basically these fellas have, have been wandering around in the wilderness and they've come across this abandoned little ball tank and they're just scoping it out just to see whether or not anything's untoward's gone on so it's almost yeah they're having a little looky low just to see what's out there so yeah it's one of them isn't it with a couple of stories it can either be abandoned or it, they could be the crew from it but yeah there's a figure inside there who's uh, brown bread so yeah so we got we got in peak in there and I think just the tank sitting there on its little bit of grass it's come to the edge of where it is and uh, who knows what happened you know perhaps it couldn't travel any further because of the rocks and all of that lot you know all the people inside departed but he's going to be floating in the water this poor unfortunate chap he's going to be down there and hence what the two blokes are looking they're like oh there's the other fella he's he's unfortunately floating uh, down there so that's where i'm going to leave it uh, so thank you all for watching Hopefully you're beginning to enjoy what I'm trying to do with this dio. Hopefully you're beginning to see what I can see. In the meantime, uh, pop over and see the fellas at eModels. Uh, have a looky loo in the shop and see whether there's anything in there you fancy. And until the next episode, I'll see you later. Bye bye for now.